All right. Wow. Okay. We got some, we got some reveals. There's, there's this one. And then there's another whole page. There's another whole page of reveals. All right. So this is the big one. This is the big dump. Looks like it looks like this is the big all region dump. And tomorrow we'll get either, you know, Ionia cards or Targon cards. And then we'll get a champion. So it's going to be a, a couple days still until we actually get a champion. But that's all right. We got all right. Let's start over on the left. We got a we got a bilge water card here. Bone skewer. All right. Pike confirmed. All right. If Pike wasn't confirmed before, he's certainly confirmed now. This is a this is a Pike. This is a Pike card. Let's take a look. Bone skewer fast two mana fast speed spell An ally strikes. Oh, an ally strikes an enemy then moves to the top of your deck. <laughs> Just when I need to face an LOR after getting pounded in lol. Is that Pike? I can never escape my trauma. Oh, I'm sorry. Bone Skewer, an ally strikes an enemy and then moves to the top of your deck. So one of your, you pay two mana for your unit to kill something and then go away and you'll draw it again next round. That doesn't look very good. <laughs> this does not look very good. I don't want my unit. Oh, well, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I guess it's OK if your opponent is like killing your so if, if, if you're getting hit by a vengeance or a get excited or whatever and your unit is about to die. You can play Bone Skewer on that unit and it'll get some value and then go to the top of your deck and not, you know, and not die. But like, that's kind of just dying anyway. Meh, I'm very meh, very meh. Although I'm very meh about this card, but it might it might be a it might be a clue. It might be a clue about what Pike does, you know? But in a vacuum, this mm, meh. I'm very meh. All right, one other, one other Bilgewater card. Monster Harpoon, six mana fast. Deal five to a unit. Plunder, I cost three less. That's better. Ooh, Plunder, yo. Pike, hello? Yeah, 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 Pike, hello. Monster Harpoon. Three, if you've activated plunder, this is three mana to deal five to a unit at fast speed. That's now that's what I'm talking about. That's better. That's much better. That's much better. But, you know, plunder decks aren't very good right now. So like. This is this is actually like a reason to run monkeys. This right here is a reason to put powder monkeys in your deck, right? Because they activate plunder super easy. I like that card. I like that card. But again, plunder decks, not great right now. So like. Let's keep moving. We got a Freljord card. We got a Freljord card. Succumb to the cold. Succumb to the cold. Four mana burst speed spell. Frostbite an enemy. Oh, summon a frozen thrall. Oh, wow. Okay. I thought it I thought it meant summon a frost guard thrall, which is the eight, which is the eight eight, but no, it's summon a frozen thrall. Sure. Sure. So come to the cold, frostbite an enemy, summon a frozen thrall. This is a No. <laughs> no, no, we're not doing that. Riot. No, 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 no. We're not we're not paying one more for a flash freeze just so we can summon a frozen thrall riot. Riot, we're not doing that. <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> I'm not paying one more mana for a flash freeze just so I can get a frozen thrall in eight rounds. You flash freeze on like round seven, round eight, round nine, last round of the game. I'm not flash freezing just so I can get a frozen thrall out of it. That's dumb. No, bad. Moving on. Let's skip this one and go to Buried in Ice. Okay. We got Buried in Ice, another Freljord card. Slow speed spell. Obliterate each enemy 
Okay, obliterate each enemy to summon a frozen tomb in its place. Wait a minute. Hold on. Ye Whoa, wait a minute. Nine mana, slow speed. Remove every blocker from your opponent's side of the board. And they'll be back in two rounds. That's interesting. See you later today, today, Rodney. See you later. See you later, Remy. Thanks for swinging by. That's interesting. This card does not suck, but it's not exactly what Freljord wants. Right? This card does not suck, but Freljord generally doesn't much care about blockers. I guess you could develop a punish. I guess I guess you could develop a punish. I guess you could punish a, a develop, right? This is like a this is like a Freljordian ruination, right? If your opponent is gearing up to have a huge attack on you and they they play one too many units and you're afraid of it, you can just play buried in ice. But like, you could also just play Ruination. Every every Freljord deck that wants to go to the late game just plays Ruination. So maybe, yeah, this is like a Freljordian Ru Ruination. We can we can actually leave Shadow Isles now. We could we could now leave Shadow Isles and build big late game Freljord decks and be okay because we don't need Ruination anymore because we have Buried in Ice. Sort of, maybe, kind of, ish. Eh, nah, I mean. I mean, it's there, right? Like, Ruination's better. Ruination is definitely better, but it's there. If you if you want, if you really don't want to be in Shadow Isles, you can run Buried in Ice and whatever other region you want. Okay, that's interesting. And and if we really want to build a a Freljord Go Face deck, right? If we really want to build like a late a mid to late game Freljord big stuff at the end Go Face deck. We could play, maybe play Buried in Ice to achieve lethal, but like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be putting that in my deck on purpose. I wouldn't be building a deck around that, but, you know, stranger things have happened. Alright, let's check out this Shadow Isles card. We got a new Shadow Isles 1-drop. A new Shadow Isles 1-mana <clears throat> card. The Wings and the Wave. 1-mana zero one. 1 Oh, play me as first wave or last wind. Oh, which are these? First wave, last wind. So first wave is when I'm summoned, summon a prey. Oh, so this is two zero ones. Or last wind to play me kill an ally. Whoa. <gasps> Yo. Oh, my, my camera's actually in the way here. There we go. Play me as first wave or last win. So you either play this as two preys. When I'm summoned, summon a prey. And it's a, and it's a zero one, so it's also basically just a prey. Or you play it as a one mana three three that kills something. This is yo, this is either two preys or a ravenous butcher for one. This is either two preys for the price of one or a ravenous butcher for one mana. That's sick. Yo, this is actually a fantastic card. You can slot this right into Nasus Thresh and it'll do wonders. It'll do wonders for you. Oh my goodness. This is an ex this is an excellent card. So a lot of the reasons that Shadow Isles. Well, okay. A lot of things in card games rely on getting your your a type unit in the hand in your hand at the same time as your b type unit right with with an example being in shadow isles you need your sacrifice targets in your hand at the same time that you get your sacrificers the card that actually wants to sacrifice something you need to have them both if you have too many sacrifice targets you know you don't and you, you just have a board full of zero ones and if you have too many things to sacrifice you can't play them because you have no good targets for them. this can fill in the gap on either side that's incredibly powerful that's incredibly powerful 
If you if you've got a handful of butchers, that's okay. You can play the first wave. If you've got a handful of preys, that's okay as well, right? If you've got like a a curse keeper and a fading icon and nothing else, you know, and a and a and a wings in the wave, that's okay. You can just play the last wind. And get your curse keeper out. That's really good. This is a really good card. This is an excellent card. Why does Shadow Isles get all the good cards? <laughs> what the heck? How come Shadow Isles gets all the good cards? But but yeah, good card, good card. All right, let's check out whatever we got over here. Ooh, we got some Piltover cards. Ooh, we got some Piltover cards. We're going to start with Demacia. We're going to start with Demacia again. We got ourselves an Ardent, Ardent Tracker. Six mana, three, five. Okay, this is Demacia. Six mana, three, five scout unit. When you summon elite, reduce my cost by one. Oh. And it's elite. A three, five with scout that can get really low costed, potentially. <laughs> okay. I mean, <clears throat> this might just be better than uh, Vanguard Scout or whatever that thing is. Vanguard Squire. This might just be better than Vanguard Squire. Which isn't saying much because Vanguard Squire was always kind of disappointing, right? But if you can play, if you can play so many elites or summon so many elites that this gets down to one or zero, then this is probably pretty good. A zero mana three five is not is not a bad card. Let me tell you with Scout. That's a good card. But elite decks don't, well, they don't really exist right now. <laughs> so, um, meh, this might be okay. I, I can imagine, I can imagine this being okay, but it's not going to like blow you out of the water or anything. That's fine. That's fine. Cool. Neat. Interesting. And then we got, ooh, we got a new Scythria card. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we have yet another Scythria card. Just grow up and be a champion already, Scythria. Okay. Citria, Lady of Clouds, 10 mana, 10, 10 with Challenger. This, this is a 10 mana, 10, 10 in Demacia. Move over, Aurelian soul. Move over. We got Citria now. When I'm summoned, I had a noob question about Citria, but you just answered it for me. Could have sworn it was already a card. Oh yeah, Citria is already a card. There's, there's actually three cards. This is the fourth, this is the fourth Citria card. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's Scythria of Cloudfield, which is a little baby one, 2-2. Two, two. And then there's Vanguard Squire, which is, which is Scythria. It doesn't have the name Scythria, but that one is also Scythria. And then there's Scythria the Bold, which is the 6-6. Six, six. And now there's this, Scythria Lady of Clouds. Okay, Challenger. When I'm summoned, double other allies' power and health and grant them Challenger. Jesus Christ. Holy crap. Yo, do you need a late game bomb? I got you. I got you, your late game bomb. My God. That's disgusting. That is incredible. Why is she so popular? Uh, I don't know. She's just cool. Move over, Aurelian Soul. Move over. So you know how, so you know how Aurelian Soul is a 10 mana card that like invokes another card and then every round he gives you more cards? And this is the opposite of that. This is a 10 mana card that you slap down on turn 10 and say, I'm ending the game now. <laughs> this is a this is a 10 mana card that you slap down and go, game over. <laughs> it ends now. Boom. <laughs> you know? Ay vey. That being said, she doesn't actually even end the game. If she gave if she gave everything overwhelm or fearsome, she might end the game. But she gives everything challenger. So it's more like, so it's more like a Demacian board wipe. 10-10 with Challenger. When I'm summoned, other, uh, double other allies' power and health and grant them Challenger. Grant. Well, actually grant them Challenger. This isn't even a, this isn't even a temporary buff. I thought this was like, they all get double power and Challenger for a round. No. You double their power and health and grant them Challenger. That's permanent. This is just, I win. I win the game. Get out of my game. Are you ruinating? Do you have a ruination in your deck? If no, I win. Like, that's what this card is. This card is like, 
You you should have killed me before we got to round 10. Damn. Yo, Demacia? Demacia might uh make a couple decks with this, I think, guys. Guys, I think Demas I think Demacia might make a few decks where like they I I wanna get to round 10. Demacia's always had this thing where like they're the mid game. They're the mid game region, right? We want we don't want to win on round three, you know, and we don't have any decimates to kill you later. So we're not we can't be aggro. But we don't have ruination or Aurelian soul or invokes, so we can't be control. We have big dudes that go face, but they're expensive. We are mid range, right? Demacia has always been I am mid range because they don't have aggro cards and they don't have control cards. But I mean, this is a finisher. This is a this is a late game mid range card, which is so cool. It's like. Now Demacia can be like, sure, drop your Aurelian soul. See if I care. I'm dropping Cythria, Lady of Clouds, killing your Aurelian soul. And my entire board is gigantic. Come at me, you know, like we can keep going. That's really cool. Demacia can like go to the late game now. They've never been able to do that, except with like um, Bright Steel Formation, right? That's cool. Dang, we got to win before round 10. Yeah, Demacia is essentially saying, Demacia now, any any deck with this card in it is essentially saying you better win before round 10. It, that's essentially what this is. This is a really good card. I think I think there are going to be decks. I don't know if you could just slot I don't know if you could just slot this into a deck that already exists. Like I don't know if Jarvan Shen just wants this, but like maybe it will. Maybe you could just slot this into Demacia decks and be like, "All right. Better ki better kill me before round 10." <laughs> or 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 make sure I have a small board on round 10 you know I'll, alternatively make sure my only have like two or three you know one or two units on round 10 so that when I drop this I don't get huge benefits that also that also is the case a finisher to end all finishers yeah basically the best card here looks like Korean sump worker oh, okay that's next that's next I'm looking at that one next all right Korean I don't know what a Korean is but Turian? <laughs> Tyrian? Turian? Turian? Turian Sump Worker. Two mana, one, three, one, two. Two mana, one, two, elusive. When you summon another Turian Sump Worker, obliterate me and transform allied Turian Sump Workers everywhere into Sump Works posses. Oh. Obliterate me and transform allied Turian sump workers everywhere into sump works posses. Which is a two mana four two with elusive that says attack do one to the enemies and the enemy nexus. Oh. I don't know what a Korean is, Ron, but yeah, that came out of my mouth and I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> that doesn't. Sump works plus stalking shadows is huge value. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Turian Sump Worker plus Stalking Shadows is huge value. So what they want you to do, all right. So this is the best argument I have ever seen for running counterfeit copies in your deck, right? This is the best reason to run counterfeit copies that I have yet seen. And it's actually in Piltover, which is good. Because the idea here is if you can get two of them on the board at the same time, all your future ones are crazy good. And game ending. But you have to get two in your hand at once and then more later. So you need to be running something like counterfeit copies or maybe or maybe stalking shadows, right? It's just another iterative improvement angle. That too. That too. Ooh, iterative improvement though. Oh, good point. Good point. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely going to have to make a Piltover Shadow Isles, Stalking Shadows, iterative improvement deck with these guys in it. Yep. Yep. Well, that's happening. We're going to do that. All right. Let's take a let's take a look at this next one. We have um Move my camera out of the way here. We have 
Adapt, adapt, adaptatron. We have a, we have an adaptatron 3000. One mana, one three tech. It's actually got the tech keyword, which means it's related to Heimerdinger's turrets for some reason. One mana, one three. When you summon a tech, we share keywords. Right. So tech. The, 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 the descriptor tech right here, just like, it's just like elite, right? Every Heimerdinger turret has that. Every Heimerdinger turret has the tech keyword. So this says, when you summon a tech, we share keywords. We share keywords, which means, which means if I play, so if you play this on round one, we didn't need the tech thing. It looks like Heimerdinger. Oh, well, I, I suppose it does. I suppose it does. So if you play Adaptatron on round one, and then, you know, on round five, you play Heimerdinger and you play the turrets. If you play the two mana turret with tough, this gets tough. If you then play the three mana turret that has fearsome, this gets fearsome. And the other one gets tough. And if you then play the four mana one that has overwhelm, this gets overwhelm, and that one gets fearsome and overwhelm. Uh, and, and tough. We share keywords. That's very interesting. That's some, that's some serious Heimerdinger support right there. Very neat. Very neat. I don't know if it's good enough to make Heimerdinger good. But it's overstated as hell. A one mana one three that does that is already pretty overstated. But like, at the same time, there's not really a point to an adapted, like, there's not really a point to a one three with five keywords. Right? Like, best case scenario, this is still just a 1-3 with, like, tough and overwhelm and elusive and fearsome. That doesn't matter. That's not helpful. <laughs> you know? I guess it's spreading... I guess its job is to spread its keywords to other tech. So that other tech is getting fearsome and maybe elusive and barriers and stuff, but... It's cool, it's cool, but I don't see it making Heimerdinger viable. I don't see it making Heimerdinger decent yet. Adaptatron Mechanized Mimic deck incoming, it will be bad. It will be bad. Excellent. Korean Sumpworks makes SIPNZ burn amazing. They have Fading Memories too, I forgot. Fading Iterative and Stalking Shadows. I mean... I mean, do you really want a fading? Do you really want an elusive version or an elusive and ephemeral version of this with fading memories? I'd rather not, but. Am I right? They're still cool. They're still cool for sure. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have to mess around with that. We're gonna have to mess around with how good uh, a Shadow Isles P and Z Sump Works Posse Burn deck is, because that sounds that sounds silly and maybe awful. You know, like maybe maybe that sounds like it might be really really good and oppressive if it's if it's built perfectly. But but also you have to draw them, so like who knows? Who knows? All right, and then this is their little skill. Circuit Breaker. Wait, what is this? Deal one to enemies in the enemy nexus. Oh, it deals one to enemies and the enemy nexus? Oh, these are these are broken. I thought it was just deal one to the nexus. Deal one to enemies and the enemy nexus? This thing is broken. Okay, yep, we're gonna have to mess around with that. Oh, we're gonna have to mess around with that. All right, and then we got a couple Noxus cards. We got... Oh, I hate that. All right, let's look at in, let's look at incisive tactician first. Eight mana, four five. Okay, not off to a good start. Eight mana, four five. We're not off to a good start. Reputation. I cost six. When I'm summoned, rally. Okay. No, 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 no. Ah. No, no, no. Ah. 
Do you guys know the card? Dragon Guard Lookout? Or whatever the thing's called? This guy was better in the bloody business art? He was better in the bloody business art. So, there's a card in Demacia. Right? The Dragon... Dragon Guard Lookout, I think it's called. It's a 6 mana 3-5. It says if you behold the dragon rally, the card's not good. This is just that, but Noxus. This is, this is, I, I should test it. I, to be fair, I should test it, but this is just, I think worse than Shunpo. I think this is actually worse than Shunpo. I'm not taking Shunpo out of my deck so that I can play incisive, in, incisive tactician, so. So there's really no point. Oh yeah, Tactician is dog shit. Okay, good, good, good. All right, let's check out this Thrashing Snapper, which makes me very sad. Yo, did you guys know that Noxus is invading Ionia? It's pretty sad. It's pretty tragic. So we got Thrashing Snapper, which is very clearly a tied down version of Scaled Snapper. Not having fun. I'm not having fun. It's a one mana two one. It says when an enemy blocks me, Give me plus three plus zero this round. Uh, and for some reason it's epic. And this is an epic card for some reason. Reputation, I am a worse citrus courier. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, citrus courier needs the plunder effect. So like, that's even worse, but. Plunder, plunder is even worse to have to activate than reputation is, but for a rally effect, for a rally effect specifically, I mean. Now, Thrashing Snapper here is just a one mana two one. That's all it is. It's just a one mana two one, and when you attack with it, for some reason, if it gets blocked, it gets bigger. So I guess if you give this overwhelm. I guess this is a this is something that you can actually give overwhelm to. Like if you've cast might on this, your opponent really doesn't want to block it. That's kind of it. Like eh, I don't see it. Dashing Sapper's only good if you can give it overwhelm. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Actually, actually, I imagine it's Thrashing Snapper is really good if you can give it Challenger or 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 if you're in a vulnerable deck. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Hold on. What if we can give enemies vulnerable with Shurima cards, right? What if we exhaust something? This is a 5-1. Okay. All right. That's a little better. Okay. Okay. So like, so like maybe this will slot into like a Noxus Renekton deck. Maybe this, maybe this is like something that you can slot into a Noxus deck that's also running Shurima vulnerable cards and maybe that will make a little bit of sense. Okay, all right, I can see that, I can see that. Does this mean my Shurima Noxus Overwhelm deck is viable? Not yet. <laughs> uh, not yet, but maybe. Maybe we're getting there. It's not, like, honestly, Shurima Noxus Overwhelm is not that far off. It's really, it's really not that far off. Rune Runner is great. Bloody Business onto Rune Runner is great. It's, it's not that far off. And with, you know, we're getting more Shurima cards from this set. That might, that might be enough to push it over the edge. Sivir gives it quick attack. Sivir gets a quick, gives it quick attack. That's true. And whatever else she has. <laughs> one mana, two, one. When I attack, your opponent casts Vile Feast. <laughs> yep. Neat. Neat, neat, neat. So we got a gigantic... Yeah, I think the card... I think the card that is most promising here is either Scythria or the or the sump worker 
right these these sump works guys look 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 potentially insane right potentially batshit insane but also potentially like utter meme tier like like these guys could be just memes or they could be crazy i do not know which it actually is because if you have there are a few more cards on mobilitics whoa, whoa, whoa are we not done yet there are more there can't be more. That was already a bunch. Uh-uh, that's it. Nope, we got all the same ones. I think some works are pretty breakable. Gifts, gifts beyond and Aphelios can pull them. Okay, that's interesting, but that's like the only thing that Targon has going for them as far as these guys. I don't know. I still think it's all about that stalking shadows. I still feel it's I feel like it's all about stalking shadows on a sump worker, right? Because then you play the ephemeral one and then you play the real one. The ephemeral one obliterates itself and the real one becomes this. Oops, let me move my camera again. Oops. Wow. Stocky Shadows is sick on them too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Protection for them as well in Targon. Eh. Yeah, but I don't know. I feel like there's not enough. I feel like there's not enough in Targon that can actually like find them or copy them. Right? Because the whole point, the whole point of Sumpworks Posse is that Every, every Chirian, Chirian, Kyrian, Kyrian, I'm going to call him Kyrian. Every Kyrian sump worker everywhere transforms into sump works posse, not just the one on the field. So the idea is you want lots of them. But, you know, everybody knows that everybody knows that counterfeit copies sucks. So like. I don't want to run counterfeit copies in my deck, so I'd rather just go to Shadow Isles and run like... I don't know, I guess Fading Memories? Scribe of... Uh, yeah, but we also know that... We also know that like, going the full Shadow Isles copy package also sucks, right? You don't want to go to Shadow Isles and run Fading Memories and Splinter Soul and Scribe of Sorrows. You know, you don't want to run those cards. That's a meme. That is a meme. But there might be a balance, right? There might be some sort of balance where you can get something going here. Honestly, two or three is more than enough to make these overwhelming. That might be true. That might be true. If you can just get if you can get a second one of these out, that might be game over. Depending depending on the deck you're going up against, right? If you're going up against Lissandra Trundle, you get two of these out and they just avalanche you. So like, <laughs> you know, so like, <laughs> but if you're going up against Noxus, that could just be that's just good. That could just destroy them, you know, because they can't they can't answer you. So who knows? It could be really good. Could be really good. Uh, the Bilgewater cards. Bone Skewer looks terrible. Monster Harpoon looks pretty cool. First wave looks busted as hell. First wave, first wave, or, or I guess the card is actually called the wings in the wave. The wings in the wave looks incredible, looks insane. Succumb to the cold is garbage. Buried in ice is interesting, but probably not great. Buried in ice is like niche. It's like really super niche. It's like a Freljord ruination when you really don't want to run Shadow Isles, right? It's like, it's like, here's your, here's your, here's your off brand ruination when you really don't want to be running Shadow Isles. Thrashing Snapper, also pretty niche. Looks like maybe Shirima, Noxus Shirima support. Incisive Tactician, I think is just bad. Probably. Like, I'll, I'll give it a shot. This is my Marauder boy. This is my Marauder Rallier, but I don't think it's good. I really don't. I've been wrong before. Never, never count out a rally, but at the same time, like, eh. Adaptatron 3000.
Adaptatron 3000, I mean, I, we're getting Heimerdinger support and that's nice. I just don't really see how this actually supports Heimerdinger. It just gives, it just spreads keywords around and I don't think that's terribly important. So I don't see that one. Korean Sump Worker looks excellent. Cythria Lady of Clouds looks insane. And Ardent Tracker looks like, like a better Vanguard Squire, which isn't saying much. But it could be fine. Ardent Tracker could be fine. It's just not very exciting. And that's all of them. Whew. And that's all of them. Guys, Strength in Numbers is a joke card, guys. You, you, you shut your mouth. You shut your mouth, Remarkable Frisbee. I will have... I will... I will... I will endure no disrespect to the card's strength in numbers. I will endure no disrespect. Buried in Ice is good. It only, targets, it only targets enemies. It literally clears the board for you to attack without blocks. Yeah, yeah. But like... But like, what late game Freljord deck cares about that? This is more of a... I, I look at this more of a more of a, a, a develop punisher, right? Like if your opponent plays, I don't know. If your opponent gets to round 10 and drops, I don't know, Scythria, Lady of Clouds, for instance, right? If your opponent drops this on round 10 and they're about to attack you, you can be like, okay, I gotta quick play buried in ice so I can not die for two rounds, right? <laughs> maybe I can maybe I can pull out my win con by then, you know? But I mean, like, just run Ruination, right? But, but like, just run Ruination, right? So, like, I don't know. Ooh, but yeah, those are the new cards. Those are the new cards. Ooh. Pretty good, pretty good.